Now, the race is on as EV tolls start the final hurdle towards entry into commercial service. And as the temperature is hotting up in the race, the temperature is also hotting up here in Dubai, where Joby Aviation is participating in its first international air show with a flying aircraft. Now, we had the chance to see, but perhaps not so much hear this in the flying display earlier, where we also caught up with the company to find out what the latest developments were in the race towards certification. Or will that still be back at home turf? Uh, I think it's a matter of uh, how we can feed most of these initial cities in the right manner to develop uh, sort of the transportation and the model in those all of these areas. It's hard right now to say which one will be first and which one will be second. What I can say is uh, we're trying to make sure that we're supporting all of the initial ones in a equal manner. Uh, clearly not all the factors depend on us, you know, there's regulatory agencies, there's infrastructure, there's a lot of other things that need to come to place and we're pushing on all these fronts in the same way. And thinking back to this year's collaboration with your new partner Blade, congratulations. Yeah. The initial use case commuter project that you've announced, do you think something similar could be announced over here? Uh, well, I think the use case that we have in the US with Blade and also in, in France is something that we can replicate across you know multiple regions and you can think about it in some ways if you think about the initial demonstrations that we did we did them first in the u.s and then moved and did the first international demo in dubai and then uh you know just a few weeks ago we were doing one at the osaka world expo mm -hmm. air show in japan and so on so sort of proving ground in uh the u.s which is obviously you know where we are it's an extremely important market for us it's where AAM is being innovated and driven, and then we expect to replicate those in other locations as well, including here. And thinking about the US, we've got the November Hybrid Electric Partnership announced. Could you see that of being of use for missions over here? Yeah, so I think what's important about the uh, hybrid version of the aircraft is, uh, first off, it builds on technologies and know-how that we have proven with this aircraft. So that vertical integration, that in-house design, that capability is sort of the basis and we can build on there. It's also important to think about it as complementary to the electric aircraft that we are uh, demonstrating here today, right? The market uh, has opportunities for multiple types of missions. And so if the market here is um, able to accommodate that, I can see that uh, also possible here. We are developing it with uh, dual use in mind, both for defense applications as well as commercial applications. So it works out perfectly for us from that standpoint. Because presumably the hybrid payload is going to be higher than a conventional electric payload. What's key about the hybrid is primarily the range. Uh, some of the missions will uh, require longer ranges and that's what it mostly is trying to deliver on. Uh, payload will uh, vary depending on what those missions look like. Are you actively involved in any conversations ongoing with military entities within the region here? So with our partner L3 Harris we're exploring lots of opportunities at this time we're still in that exploration phase. But we still think a uh, civilian commercial passenger carrying entry into service first before potential GU's applications arise. For the electric aircraft that's our focus right now it's uh, passenger applications, civilian commercial applications. Initially, passenger carrying EV tolls will be flown with a pilot on board, but Joby and others envisage a future where autonomous flight might be not only possible, but acceptable. At the same time, Joby is working with partners to train the first EV toll air taxi pilots. We're attacking this in multiple ways. Uh, speed to market is really important for us, and we believe that uh, pilot-operated uh, aircraft, pilot on board, is one of those enablers to get into the market as soon as possible. Uh, you also know that uh, we have been uh, developing uh, the super pilot capability, which is autonomous aircraft flying that we've been demonstrating uh, for a while now in the US. So that technology is also making really amazing progress with some uh, real applications. So you can see these two things uh, sort of following each other, so to speak. But uh, again, uh, one step at a time, and uh, we think there's definitely opportunities on that front. We're also uh, developing our own training schools. Uh, we obviously have 
uh, our part, you know, 61, 135, 145 maintenance and so on. And so we've actually just uh, a few months ago launched our training schools for AMPs, pilots, uh, you know, mechanics and so on. And that's been going really well in the U.S. Uh, we expect to replicate a similar format uh, here as well. Initial training is going uh, well, and we think that is going to line up with sort of the launch next year. With eVTOL aircraft expected to operate in multiple locations worldwide, Joby and other manufacturers are having to address how the electric aircraft will cope with hot and dusty environments like that at the Dubai Air Show. So in the design of the aircraft, if you step back and you know decompose the aircraft, right? you've got these components, subsystem systems in the whole aircraft. From the very beginning at the component level, we do address those things with various what we call environmental qualifications, right? So the pieces of aircraft that go through surf, go through sand and dust, for example, they go through humidity, condensations, altitude changes, rapid temperature uh, changes, all of these things happen in a lab. Then we assemble these and we test it at a system and then at an aircraft level. And this is the exciting part about the phase one of this project, right? When we started flying in June in Marga, temperatures were extremely high. We did 21 flights, air conditioning on. It was really to sort of put that rigor into the aircraft level testing. And we're really excited about the results to date. Is the air conditioning quite a, a bleed or a drain on the power? So the air conditioning was designed from the very beginning into the aircraft. So. And, and what's important about that, the whole aircraft was designed as an optimized system, right? The, the air conditioning was there from the very beginning. So no, it was designed Long to be part of it. Long before you thought of bringing it into a really hot environment Ex like the one we've got exactly, outside today. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, to be honest, it's freezing cold back in London right now. And I don't think I would need to fly with the air conditioning switched on. Would I get would I get extended range if I just decided to say, hey, you know what? I don't need any additional air con. Now you're thinking like an engineer. That's awesome. It's a good <laughs> question. That, that's perfectly. So all of those things are things you can trade, right, against mm -hmm. either payload or range. Those are the things that we're going to be doing, again, back to the re regionalization. But it does get bad in the UK as well. Assuming type certifications for its EV toll is achieved, the next challenge is to scale up rates of manufacturing because the long-term business models at companies like Joby hinges on thousands of these vehicles being in the market. And that means building them at much faster rates than for current aircraft. Two or three years ago, we had been flying primarily what we call prototype aircraft. Those are aircraft that you're developing in a different way, not with totally manufacturing in mind, so to speak. Uh, then we moved into uh, the manufacturing line. So that was, we were starting to produce products from our manufacturing line that was intended to scale. And we delivered about five air aircraft to date from that line. And the idea behind that is how to perfect the manufacturing for scale, right? So the first one was intended for meeting performance and demonstrating how the aircraft does. The other ones are manufacturing. And so we're really excited about having demonstrated that last year. This year, the goal was to build on that. And now we're starting to build uh, FAA conforming aircraft. So on top of we're building on the main manufacturing line, now we're building conforming uh, parts so that those aircraft can be as close as possible to the TC. So now it's about ramping up and it's about also being compliant, compliant in preparation for our production certificate. I expect that we'll uh, first start delivering, you know, tens of those aircraft and then ramp up from there. We make these both in uh, Marina, California, and then we just started expanding also in Ohio, uh, one of our biggest sites. In fact, last week we announced that we started manufacturing our propeller blades in Ohio. We're really proud about that achievement and you can expect us to build up from there. So we are highly interested in manufacturing in the broader region uh, here. We think that's uh, important both in terms of uh, sort of uh, supporting the scale up, right? Um, you can scale faster in more locations and so on, but also it will make the delivery to the aircraft to the region much faster from that standpoint, right? Versus building an aircraft, disassembling it, shipping it, reassembling it, right? So regionalization will be a very important part of our strategy.